The City of Stars, a place where the rich live lavishly and the not so fortunate struggle to survive day by day. Two boys who have been on the run for two weeks are spotted dashing into an alleyway as the sun begins to set over the skyline. Pico, a high school dropout and notorious graffiti artist, and Benjamin, a blue-haired boy with aspirations of becoming an artist, both come to a halt, catching their breath. That was close. Do you think he saw us? I don't think so. This is the third time this week we've almost been caught. I know. With them plastering your face all over town, inevitably, someone's eventually gonna catch on to us. We both know the way they settle things, Ben. We need to be ready for it. I told you running away wasn't a good idea. I can't do this. What if... Ben. When he catches us... Hey, it's going to be okay. I've got your back every step of the way. What do we do? How about we do a practice round? Repeat after me. Three, two, one, go! was that? You did amazing, Blue. I knew you could do it. Thank you. Anytime. Though, we should probably get a move on before... Footsteps can be heard at the entrance of the alleyway, interrupting their conversation. Uh. A tall man stepped out of the shadows. He goes by the name Father Ferris, a retired rap battler whose name is well known by all throughout the city. Back in the day, his soulful voice was his claim to fame, but now retired, he lives very well off with his beautiful wife, and up until a few weeks ago, his prodigal son. Benjamin! We've been looking all over for you. I see you've been running around with that street rat again. Nice to see you too. So, you think you're all grown up now? If you're such an adult, then you should have no problem beating me in a rap battle. What? Come on, sport. Show me what you got. Three, two, one. Oh, 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 
you sound just like your old man. <sighs> it's a real shame that you're putting all that talent to waste. Hey, I'm listening to him. Your mother and I built this perfect life for you, so you could become a star. And you want to be what? An artist? Now doesn't that just sound ridiculous? Please, just listen to me for once. Speak up, son. I can't hear you. It, it's my life. Oh, is it? Three, two, one. trying to find you these past couple weeks. Let's make a deal. If you can beat me in this next song, we can forget this all ever happened. Really? Scout's honor. I trust him, Ben. Okay, if you really promise. You know the deal if you lose. After we get back home, I'll make sure to whip you back into shape.
did it. I, yeah, I guess I did. So, um, we're free to go, right? Come on, Benjamin. We never raised an idiot. You didn't actually think I was leaving empty-handed, did you? Uh, no, stay away from me. Get your hands off of him. Pico! Come on, I know a place we can hide. The two boys make a break for it, leaving behind Father Ferris, who's all but done. The starry night had given way to dark clouds, rumbling a warning before giving way to a downpour. All boys found themselves taking cover in a decrepit building. It was near impossible for them to see three feet in front of them, when there wasn't a hint of light to brighten up the room. At least they were alone, right? I don't know about this place, Pico. Well, you got a better place to hide? No, but an abandoned mansion? It's scary. It, it, it's unsettling. It's... It's... It's a spooky! Yeah, exactly. You took the words right from my mouth, Pico. That wasn't me. Huh? Then who? Hi, misters! Relax. It's just a couple of kids. What the hell are you two doing here? I'm Skid! This is Bob! We are doing the spooky things during the spooky month! It's November. Isn't it a bit late? That's what all the kids at school say. But my mom says it's not true. We come here to hide from them so we can be as spooky as we want. Hey, wait. You look familiar. Uh, oh? Yeah, yeah. We know your parents. They're super famous. Also, we've seen your face on posters all over town. I see. My mama states of Mr. Ferris and Mrs. Maris performing. We watch them all the time. than I thought. That was fun! Let's do another! Oh? You want to keep going? We can even show you the spooky dance this time! Spooky dance? Yeah! It's where you kind of crouch and then you dance! Come on! We'll show you! 
I'm not much of a dancer, but one more shouldn't hurt. Are you sure about this, baby blue? Do you look like you need to sit down? It'll be fine, Pico. They're just kids looking for fun. I want to keep them in high spirits. Yippee! Three, two, one, go! Before he knew it, Benjamin was suddenly alone. The sounds of distant thunder was the only thing he noticed at first. And then he saw it. A tall, slender beast stood where the two kids once were. He looked so familiar, probably because his appearances were such a common occurrence. What? Oh no, not you again. Why are you here? Why now? What do you even want? I don't know why I bother asking anymore. Please, just leave me alone. Please, I'm tired of this. Three, two, one, go!
Hofty, can you hear me? I- yeah. What happened? You were out cold. It was him again. Oh. Are you okay? Yeah, it's over. At least for now. Wait, where are the kids? I don't know. They said something about candy and ran off. Don't worry, though. They got a ride from someone driving a white van. They what? Did I say something wrong? Let's just get out of here. This place gives me the creeps. Uh, On second thought, maybe we should just stay here until morning. Director's note, no spooky voice were harmed in the creation of this chapter. After what felt like an endless night, both Pico and Benjamin awoke feeling quite the opposite of well-rested. They left the House of Horrors, which was actually quite pleasant during the daytime. On foot, they spent the morning heading across town to a local train station. In order to stay out of trouble, their plan was to get as far away from the Ferris as possible. Where's the damn train? Calm down. It'll be here soon, I'm sure. It better come quick. We've already been set back enough. Yeah, I know. Penny! I haven't seen you in weeks. Hey, Grace. What are you doing here? Oh, you know, just out and about. Hey, you know what would be fun? A duet, just like old times. Uh, I'm sorry, I have to catch a train. I promise it'll be quick. train like three times anyway you handled that first song like a champ benny you were always the better singer you know your parents and i have been worried sick about you when are you gonna come back you 
are coming back, right? I'm not, Grace. I'm sorry. Oh, come on, Benny. Enough of the jokes and silly talk. Maybe this will change your mind. Three, two, one, go! should be going now. Benny, tell me something. Why are you so interested in this criminal? Criminal? Can we please not do this right now? It was supposed to be the two of us since the beginning. You promised. Our, our parents promised. Mommy and Daddy told me that's the way things are supposed to be. Grace, is that really what you want? What? Uh, of course! We were born to be together! That's our destiny! Uh, Grace, that's not... Why? Why are you running away from that? From me? I'm not! Don't you see how messed up this is? You were born to live your own life, not just for an arranged marriage. Uh, no, that's your Listen. No, you listen. We were supposed to get married. That's what's best for the both of us. So please, just, just come home. Three, two, one, go.
this this wasn't how it was meant to go. I'm sorry, Grace. That life that we they made for us doesn't exist. It's not fair. How could I I thought what did I do? Did I do something wrong? God, of, of course not. You're my best friend, Grace. That hasn't changed. It's just I want to live my own life, not what they created for us. I can't help who I love. Neither can I. I... A white limo came to a screeching halt before them. Uh... Ben, not to interrupt or anything, but we've got a problem. While in the middle of a stressful conversation, our two boys are swept up from the streets, faster than light. Startled, they glance in all directions, yet they only find the wind in their hair, cars flashing by, and an unwelcome yet beautiful face, Mother Marist. Uh, hi, Mom. There's my sweet little baby. Your father and I have been oh so worried about you. I'm okay, I swear. Oh, darling. Darling, you know how mama worries. You've had your fun, but I think it's about time to come home, don't you? Mom, I... Uh, no. Could you repeat that? I'm not sure I heard you right. I said... I said no. But honey, I need a yes. Three, two, one, go! Ridiculous all this is, don't you? What do you mean? Well, it's obvious. My perfect little boy has had his mind tainted by that pest, filling your head with all kinds of shady thoughts. You fucking whore. All I've ever done is care for him. That's more than you, that monster you call a husband, has ever done. Pico, quiet. How dare you accuse my family of such things? We love you so much, Benjamin. Why don't you just come with me and... I'm not going with you. Hmm. Fine. Be that way. Three, two, one, go!
tried to make you see what a mistake you were making. But clearly, you're too stupid to see that. Stop. You better drop this act and learn to respect your mother this instant. You know what happens when you disobey. Ugh. Okay, I've had enough of this. Softy. Silence, Vermin. You can't decide things for him. She's right. What? I have to decide for myself. And I've decided that I'm going to live the life that I want to live. You've always been such an utter disappointment of a son. Three, two, one, go! in all of this. Ben? Huh? Jump. Babe, I love you, but are you fucking insane? We're on a moving car. You gotta trust me. I... Do you trust me? Yes. Then on the count of three, close your eyes and jump. One. Wait a minute. Two. Isn't there like a plan B or something we... Three. Despite being battered and bruised, Pico and Benjamin manage to escape Marist. While healing, a treacherous month flies by, which they spend resting and tending to wounds. Soon after, the boys felt well and brave enough to face the streets once again. Signs of the holiday season litter the scene, with snowflakes dancing in the air. Golden a crowd of strangers whisper to one another in excitement, waiting beside a sign that reads, Annual Holiday Fairest Meet and Greet. The two boys enjoy Enjoy the winter season with smiles, distracted by one another's company. I can't believe you're actually making me wear this. Why? You look adorable. I know. That's the problem. Come on, Tuffy. This is our first time out and about in a month. At least try to enjoy it. There they are! Huh? The crowd? Shit, what day is it? The 17th. 
why. Our son! That's why. Just in time for the holidays. You were beginning to fear the worst. How about we celebrate, sport? And finally get you home. Three, two, one, go! sweatshirt all the time. You'd have nothing to hide. You could actually call yourself a man. Now be a good son and listen to your parents this instant. Don't you dare call me your son. You try to make me a mindless slave. Just like Grace's parents did to her. Shut! No! Parents are supposed to protect and care about their children. You took away my dreams, my childhood. For so long, I thought that was what love truly was. But in reality, you were never my parents. And you never will be. Pico, hit it! You got it, babe.
you. Say something for once, god damn it! You know, I never really understood what you were, but I know very well who you are. Or who you're supposed to be. Anyways, things are different now. You don't scare me anymore. They don't scare me anymore. And I'm done letting you or anyone take control over my life. This ends now. Three, two, one, go. Perfect. A new day begins a new chapter in their lives as Ben and Pico walk along a dirt pathway. The weather was quite nice for a December afternoon, allowing people to stroll comfortably around the local park. For once, there wasn't anxiety or fear, just a little bit of first impression jitters. Our boys stop under one of the many trees scattered around the park, surveying the area. See them yet? I don't think so. It's already 3.40. They were supposed to be here 10 minutes ago. I'm sure they're just running late. Besides, it's not like we're exactly on time either. It's unlike Grace to be late though. Ever since we were kids, she was on time, if not five minutes early. Yeah, I get it. Penny! Oh, there she is. It's so good to see you again. <laughs> you too. So, this is the childhood friend I keep hearing about. I expected more. Hey, watch it. Ben! I'm so sorry, Penny. I promise he's usually friendlier than this. No, no, it's fine. 
know first impressions aren't my strong suit either. I uh, see you cut your hair. It looks great. Aw, thank you. Spud cut it for me. Hey, Grace. Are you sure he doesn't bite? I don't like the way he's looking at me or my boyfriend. How about we just go eat lunch? The four sit down. Each pair across from one another. The air was uncomfortable. The tension suffocating. So, how did you two meet? Oh, we met like a month ago at the train station. Wow, really? That sounds... Wait, you mean... Hey, you know what? Grace told me a lot about you, Benji. Oh, please. You can just call me Ben. She said you were a pretty good singer. How about a round? Um, not sure. Come on, Benji. It would be a nice way to get to know one another. I don't like the way this is going. I... You don't let her down, do you? Fine, just one round. Ooh, 
To what we were doing? No. No. I'm not done. I refuse to lose to an ugly worm like you! Sven! Why are you acting like this all of a sudden? I can't fucking stand that he's here acting like everything's fine. Like he did nothing wrong. He knows what he did. I'd put away that knife if I were you, pal. Or else... Or else what? Are you gonna shoot me? I heard you're pretty good at that. You gonna find out, asshole? Can we all calm down, please? Sven, what's going on? Yeah, what did I ever do to you? You haven't done anything to me. I've heard plenty about you two. You act like nothing ever happened. Like you never took her happiness away. <sighs> I'm going to win this. For her. Make sure she's truly happy. Truly happy? Wait, you have the wrong idea. If you just put away the knife so we can explain. What's there left to explain? I've heard it all from her. Sven, I never met him like that. He never meant any harm. Really. So? Okay, this is enough. I'm putting a stop to this. Pico, I can handle this myself. I really appreciate you always coming here to try to defend me, but I'm my own person. I can fight my own battles. I know. I'm right behind you if you need me, Softy. <laughs> Let's finish this. Three, two, one, go!
I won. You see that, babe? I won! Yeah, you really did. Baby, you okay? Throat hurts. Aren't you supposed to be a Ferris? You went down easier than I thought. You know what? Congratulations. You beat me fair and square. Huh? That's all you're gonna say? Yep. You won, Sven. Congrats. For what it's worth, I had a lot of fun. You did? Uh, I'm glad. Hey, Ben. Yeah? You put up a good fight. You're a lot tougher than I realized. Seems I had the wrong idea about you. I'm sorry for earlier. Oh, uh, thank you. You sing a lot better than I thought you would, too. Uh, no offense, of course. <laughs> None taken. Wait, what time is it? Oh, goodness, I'm gonna be late. My parents think I'm waiting at the library. Huh? I don't know you're on a date. They do me if they knew I was with Sven, let alone how they'd feel if they knew I was with you two as well. You've never lied to your parents before. Yeah, well, I gotta live my own life sometime, you know? You're absolutely right. Ready to go, Sven? Sure, darling. It was nice meeting you two again. Sorry for the trouble. No hard feelings. Get home safe, you two. Ahem. Oh, uh, yeah. Have a good day. You know, you really should be nicer. Nah. <laughs> Fair enough, man. What a day. Well, since the double date didn't really plan out, do you want to go on an actual date with me? Really? Well, yeah. I mean, we need him to get to order. Let's grab something to eat while we're here. I would love to. And that is the Andromeda Galaxy. Looks like a blurred dot to me. You know so much about the stars, Pico. Yeah, well... <laughs> you're cute when you're all embarrassed. Shut up. How's your throat doing? It's much better now. Thanks for taking care of me. Anytime. How, uh... How are you holding up after, you know, all that? You know, I've never lost before. I'm sorry. I should have intervened sooner. I really didn't want you to have such a shitty day after yesterday. You've got it all wrong, Pico. Huh? What do you mean by that? Today wasn't shitty. Seeing Sven get all excited to win. Seeing Grace smile so wide for him. Just seeing them happy together. It's... It's been amazing. I'm glad I could give that to them. So maybe nobody lost in the end at all. <laughs> Yeah, you're right. You really are amazing, Ben. Thank you. Can I ask you something? You can say no, of course. Sure, what's up? Will you do a duet with me? Huh? You wanna sing? Yeah, you know, just the two of us. And tonight on a high note. Pun not intended. <laughs> yeah, I'd like that. Three, two, one, go!
thank you. Of course. You've made my day amazing. I love you. I love you too, Ben. S sorry, uh... <laughs> it's okay. Go ahead and answer it. Shit. What's wrong? Hold on. I'll be right back. Ben waits for an agonizing five minutes until Pico returns. Who was it? Oh, just my dad. He mentioned wanting to see me for the holidays. Really? Are you gonna go? I don't really know yet. Would you go with me? Of course I will. You and me until the end of time or whatever. I can handle meeting your folks. Hell, he can't be worse than mine. Yeah.
Happy, 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 happy,